I've been building games now for about 20 years. And over those 20 years, the tools that I use to build games have definitely changed dramatically. I would say every couple years, they change relatively dramatically. Back in the old days, I used to write all of my code on a Commodore 64. Oh my, this is really, I was really old. This is a long time ago, more than 20 years even, right? Thinking back, like I used to write all of my code in basic on a Commodore 64, and that was my only tool. I had one single tool. Moved up to doing things like Game Maker, which was a really amazing thing when I was a little kid, you know, get super excited. And then I slowly kept building up and getting more and more tools as time went by. I shouldn't really say that I built up, but just the whole industry and the whole world kind of built up and things became available. Things like the Torque game engine or the Visual C++ when that first came out and then C Sharp and the XNA framework that came out and then Unreal becoming available for regular people and then me getting to use the real versions of Unreal too. And then all of the current stuff. So Today, I wanna to go over what I'm using today, the current tools that I use just day to day, the things that help me, and that I think will be helpful for you as well. But first, I wanted to let you know that I'm releasing a completely new course that starts on Monday. So if you're looking to expand your already existing skills, definitely go check out the Game Architecture course. The course will teach you all the essentials to successfully build a large scale game through the process of building your own full scale RPG. You'll learn inventory, crafting, stats, and quest systems, customizable AI, character leveling, progression, and a whole lot more. On top of that, it'll also teach you project planning and how to successfully follow a process from start to finish when making a game, along with a lot of shortcuts to get your game done faster. And once you pass all the quizzes, you'll even get a certificate to prove that you're able to do the work and get the job done. Throughout the course, you'll have direct access to me in case you have any questions, along with access to a Discord server with tons of fellow game developers, and I'll be doing live Q&A calls every week. It's already available now, and I'm actually offering the Full Path Bundle, which includes all of my courses, including the new Game Architecture course, for just the price of one. With this bundle, you can go from never having looked at code before to using Unity on a professional level. So go check out the course and get a big discount on the bundle now by simply clicking on the link in the description. All right, enough about RPGs. Let's talk about game dev tools. So what are the primary tools that I use day to day? Well, the first one shouldn't be any surprise to you, and that's Unity. I usually use whatever the latest version of Unity is. I rarely ever go back to the LTS versions unless I have something that's close to being ready to ship. In fact, I try to stay almost on the bleeding edge of Unity versions, except I generally don't use the alphas unless I want to experiment with a new feature. But when I'm building games or building applications, Unity is generally my default option. On rare occasions, I may jump over to Unreal or something in Visual Studio or something slightly different even than that. But 99, 95% of the time, I'm working in Unity. That I don't think should be much of a surprise. And if you're watching this channel, you probably are using Unity most of the time as well. If not, you should definitely check it out though and get into it because it's a great engine. Let me go on to some tools that you might not be using though. The next one is, I would say, the one that I think is most important. So if you, if you don't take any of my advice beyond this, at least try this one out. And that's JetBrains Writer. Writer is a code editor built by the same company that made ReSharper. If you've used ReSharper before, then you probably have an idea of just how good it is. And that's how good Writer is. Writer is full of a lot of great Unity specific features and functionality and just integrations. You can start and stop the Unity editor, run all of your Unity tests, and then see a whole lot of extra Unity information that other editors just don't provide. It also gives really good tips when you're making mistakes in Unity in your code. It'll give you Unity specific recommendations that actually tell you, hey, don't do this because the Unity editor is a little bit different. You should do it this way instead. It's really helpful. And to be honest, I think that it's the easiest way to make your code get better. The only downside is that it's not free unless you can get the educational version. Personally, I just pay for a subscription because I think it's worth it. But if you can't pay for it, um, see if you can get the educational version or if you can get your employer to pay for it or try out the uh, demo trial version at least and see if you like it, maybe it's worth the investment. For me, it definitely is. And for most senior developers that I know, they all really just love it and kind of swear by the thing. So yeah, if you only try out one of the things that I recommend, well, aside from Unity, try out Rider. It's definitely worth it. It's made a huge difference for me. 
it's one of those things though where you have to kind of force yourself to use it because it's going to be a little bit weird it's going to feel a little strange things are going to feel terrible and offsetting and off-putting for the first day or two or a week so just force yourself to use it see if you like it after a month that's what i did and i just haven't been able to go back since the next tool is one i'm actually using right now and i use it for game development and recording youtube videos by the way if you're interested in seeing a video on how I record YouTube videos and the tools and software and hardware that I use for that, let me know down in the description below and maybe I'll put that together as well. But the tool that I use for both of them is called Millinote. It's something that I learned about relatively recently and it's just a tool that I've totally fallen in love with using. It's super handy and just extremely easy to use and allows me to just store all kinds of different data, relate it really easily and keep all of my thoughts in one place that I can manage. So I keep all of my video stuff there now. I keep my game designs there. I keep my progress through other projects there as well so that I can build up boards in all kinds of different ways. And just, it, it's definitely one of the coolest, most versatile tools that I've ever found and started using. So I highly recommend it. I've recommended it quite a few times before. And I even started using it in my courses and recommending it in my courses because honestly, it's just the best thing that I found for managing these kinds of projects. It's not super opinionated, but super flexible and really, really easy to use. The next set of tools that I wanna talk about, I also use a little bit for video stuff, but very rarely. It's mostly used for game development, setting up my UIs, changing out textures and things like that. And that tool is Photoshop. If you haven't used Photoshop before, it's a tool from Adobe. It's got a monthly subscription on it. I've got a whole Adobe suite of other stuff. So it's just kind of included in that plan. Otherwise, if you if you don't want to use Photoshop, there's also a great alternative that's free called GIMP. I use that all the time too. Whenever my Photoshop license isn't active, which occasionally happens because I just forget about it, stop using it, or I stop using Premiere or something for a while. If that happens, then I just switch back over to GIMP and I get about the same functionality there. So either one of those are great tools for just building up game assets or modifying game assets. The biggest thing that I do with them though is just changing stuff out. I, I'm not a great artist. I can't draw really well. I can't make amazing game art or even really good UIs, but I can go in and just start swapping out colors, changing things out, adjusting tints, replacing things, and modifying texture sizes. Those are all things that I do all the time, constantly, or even just making things transparent, finding an image that's not transparent, selecting a color and deleting that color out so that we can have transparency. These are the kinds of things that I do personally in those tools, but I do it on a regular basis, at least once a week, probably once a day on average when I'm actually in full game development mode. So I highly recommend that you get at least a little bit familiar with one of the two. Again, if you don't have a whole lot of use for it, I just jump over to GIMP. It handles 95, 99% of the stuff that you wanna do in Photoshop, and it's actually easier to swap colors in GIMP, I think, than in Photoshop. But if you have ideas for other art tools too that I should be using or maybe you should take a look at or other people should look at, drop them in the comments below because I'm not really sure if there are other great alternatives. These are just the two that I've been using the longest and they're not something that I've really heavily evaluated. So I'd be curious to see if there are some better recommendations out there. I do want to jump on to 3D modeling though and how I open and modify and play with 3D models. I do that personally through Blender. Blender is a free modeling tool that's relatively easy to use. There are other options out there. Maya is an extremely popular professional option. I personally just kind of get lost in Maya. It's a little bit overwhelming and overbearing for me and my artistic skills are so bad that I don't really get the benefit there. I like to use Blender to do a little bit more technical stuff, moving pivots around, changing things, fixing little bugs and issues with assets and not really just going in and creating my own stuff. But it is handy to be familiar with it and go through a couple tutorials so that you know how to use Blender, how you can fix minor issues with your assets or even view your assets in there and just change them around. So it's something that I would recommend you get a little bit familiar with, but don't spend a whole lot of time digging into like, how do I build out all these different models unless you happen to want to be an artist and be a 3D modeler. Good to use to figure out how to fix things. But again, just don't get too distracted. It's easy to do. The last tool or set of tools that I use is my source control setup. And I actually use two different options for this. The first option that I use is the Unity Collaborate system. It's built into Unity. It's extremely easy to use. And when I have a small project, something that I'm not gonna keep around for a year or you know six months and not gonna 
share with a whole bunch of people and it's going to be relatively small, then I'll try to keep that in the Unity Collaborate system. It makes it easy for me to just jump in, grab it from any system anywhere and easy to share with pretty much anybody at any time. When I want to build something bigger though, and I need to share it with other people, or it's a long living project that might last for years, then I jump to something else. I usually go with the Git source control system and I like to use the source tree. Um, I guess it's the source tree, source control, version control tool editor. I don't know, what, what, what do you call that? It's not an editor, because you're not really editing stuff. It's, a, it's an application. I don't know, I use source tree though. Source tree is by Atlassian and it just ties in with Git. So I think when you set it up, it'll have you create an Atlassian account. Atlassian, I think also owns Bitbucket, which is a Git hosting service that hosts Git repositories and I think some other types of repositories. And I know it can get a little bit confusing with all of this stuff. So let me just really quickly break it down. Git is the source control type. It's like the protocol, the way that things are stored. It's GIT, that's the name of it. And it's the extension for like the, uh, the repositories that you'll have. They can be hosted locally. You can have a Git repository that you host completely on your own, on your local system, never goes out to the internet. It can be hosted remotely by just about anyone as well. Anybody can set up a server to host Git, Git repositories and um, anybody can pretty much build an application to interact with or layer on top of Git repositories. There's a command line for interacting with it. You do Git space, all kinds of different things to control it, or you can use different tools to control the system. It's a very, very powerful source control system that supports things like branching when you wanna be working on one feature of a game, but still have access to another, you know, your main branch of the game and not be impacting it, but check in all of this stuff for your current branch. Like you'd be like, so say I'm working on um, an MMO. Let's just use a real world example of why you would use something like Git or a more advanced source control system. I'm working on an MMO and I've got this new feature. I need to add in, um, how about its mounts, right? I need to add in horses for this MMO game. And I need to make a lot of changes to the way that movement works and the way that the characters animate. I need to make huge changes to these systems and it's gonna take me maybe a month. Maybe it's gonna take me a month or two working with another person to get this done. We need to be able to work and commit our changes constantly, but still be able to stay updated with anything that's happening in the main game. So while the rest of the team, maybe we've got another 20 people working on the rest of the game, they're building out things, fixing bugs and stuff. We need to be able to work on our own little side set of stuff in what we call a branch, and then still pull in the changes constantly that are getting updated from the main branch or the master branch, which is like the, uh, the one that everybody else might be working on or committing their stuff into. Uh, it's a little bit, hopefully, less confusing there, but I don't know if I made it more confusing or less confusing. So the whole goal, though, is just to make it so that you can work independently or in like little subsections without interfering and breaking things. And then, uh, yeah, Git just is the best way to do it. It's why it's the most popular, but there are so many different tools on top of it that you can use. My favorite right now is still just Source Tree. And I use that with Git repositories, either using Bitbucket or one of my favorite Git repositories is GitLab because they're relatively, well, they're completely free and they're free for private repositories. So you can look around, see what the options are, or just use Collaborate if you're new to source control and you don't need to share with other people. Anyway, I hope that this list of tools was helpful. I was trying to just go over the stuff that I actually use every single day, the stuff that like most people will probably get some use out of. There are a lot of other smaller things that I use that are a lot more specific that I don't know if people would care about. I also was thinking about just doing a video on um, like recording hardware and that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that or even game development hardware, if you're interested in that stuff, hit the thumbs up button, hit the uh, like button, the share, and drop a comment below and let me know. Also, don't forget to check out my new course that's going live on Monday. Right now, I'm offering the Full Path Bundle, which includes all of my courses, including the new ones. So you can learn how to use Unity on a professional level now by simply clicking the link in the description.